I'd like to talk to you today about uh, benign bone tumors in children. Um, benign bone tumors in children is a really important topic because it's an extremely common diagnosis. If you look at all the things that we see in orthopedic clinic here at Children's, they range from, from birth disorders to uh, problems of the spine, a, a huge fracture service and, and sports service, uh, children with upper extremity, hip and knee problems, and congenital deformities. A child's work is their play, and they're pretty good at uh, playing hard and sustaining injuries. And uh, bone tumors can be associated with trauma, but most of the time uh, bone tumors are a very separate topic from the fractures that a child would normally see or from the injuries that they would sustain uh, playing uh, sports activities. Uh, here at Children's we see a huge number of fractures uh, that mushrooms between the months of May and September. But today I'm going to talk about benign bone tumors as a separate diagnosis, even though they do sometimes present with fractures. Here's one of the most common benign bone tumors. This is called a non-ossifying non fibroma. It's a variation of normal growth where the bone did not fill in its normal width and a hole in the bone uh, results as a consequence. This is a really good example of this x-ray of a fracture, this dark line spiraling down from the cyst through the other side of the tibia. This is in the tibia, which is the bone below your knee that connects your knee to your ankle. This is the ankle joint here. Here's the ankle joint here. This is the outer, really thin outer bone, the fibula. And the non ossifying fibroma is a solitary tumor in this particular child. Um, that has sustained a fracture. It's not uncommon for children to have multiple non-ossifying fibromas. They can occur anywhere in the body, but most typically are in the long bones, uh, a little bit more common in the lower extremity. Here's one in the back of the tibia on a side view here. Here's the knee joint. Here's the upper tibia. Here's the growth plate. This is the front of the tibia. This is the kneecap. This is the femur. Here's the growth plate of the distal femur. And this patient has probably an non-ossifying fibroma here and a non-ossifying fibroma here. If this particular benign bone tumor is small, some of them are very small, like barely a quarter of an inch, they will not cause a fracture and they will heal in on their own as part of normal growth. And uh, this particular case is a really good example of the thick white line that will describe the perimeter or the periphery of a typical non-ossifying fibroma usually connected to the wall of the pipe. The pipe is the tubular part of bone. The wall, as I refer to it, of the pipe is the thick cortical part of the bone that is the strongest part of the bone. And a non-ossifying fibroma arises out of that cortical part of the bone the inside of the bone is a honeycomb-like part of bone we refer to as cancellous or medullary bone. And non-ossifying fibromas arise not from the inner, inner part of the bone, but from the edge or cortical part of the shaft of a bone. Here's a schematic drawing that describes all the different benign bone tumors that you can see in children, typically under the age of 18. There's about 15 or 20 different diagnoses. I'm going to concentrate on the three or four most common. Uh, they occur in children who uh, range in age from four or five years of age to 15 to 20 years of age. They occur in the center of the bone sometimes. Sometimes they occur in the edge of the bone. I just told you about non-ossifying fibromas. Those occur in the urge edge or the cortical bone. They are also referred to when they are smaller as a fibrous cortical defect or a defect or hole in the cortical bone filled with fibrous tissue. Referred to as a fibrous cortical defect or a non-ossifying fibroma. Non-ossifying means the bone did not form in its normal way because it was displaced by the fibrous part of this very benign process. I'm not going to discuss today m more than a very brief reference. The malignant bone tumors, the two most common by far, are osteosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma. 
Where the tumor is in the bone is a hint as to the diagnosis. Age is a huge indicator of the diagnosis and a lot of these benign bone tumors, just as it is with the malignant bone tumors. An osteosarcoma occurs in the broad part of the bone that we refer to as the metaphysis. metaphysis. The shaft of bone is referred to as the diaphysis, and this would be the cartilaginous part of the femur, and the knee joint would be here. This is the growth plate. Some tumors occur just below the growth plate. It's a very distinctive location for some particular benign tumors. This is the list of the most common tumors. They all have a specific location, a tendency for age, and some characteristics that are typical. But there's a huge number of these tumors, and only your orthopedic surgeon in your local community would be much of an expert about these diagnoses. Here's the different processes that we think about when we're teaching medical students and residents about the way to approach a diagnosis, a presumptive diagnosis of a hole or an abnormality in bone. Some of those might represent subtle fractures. Infections are not uncommon in uh, children. Rheumatological diagnoses like rheumatoid arthritis, dysplasias of bone, degenerative and arthritic conditions can occur, neurologic metabolic, conditions that don't have an obvious uh, reason for being there, and congenital diagnoses. This huge sphere of possibilities is really only understood the best by an orthopedic surgeon who deals with this on a daily basis. We are not talking about uh, soft tissue tumors today. Here's a soft tissue tumor, a hemangioma in the soft tissues on, on an MRI of the lower calf, mid calf. We're not talking about malignant bone tumors. Here's an MRI that looks like a cyst, but there's some things about that picture that, that tell me that is not a benign bone cyst. Golden rules for bone tumors are have a confident diagnosis after the first couple of visits in the first three months. If you don't have a confident diagnosis on plain x-rays after the first couple of visits, you need to go to additional imaging. If there's any concerns about uh, differential diagnosis, the patient needs to be followed carefully, probably with additional imaging. A lot of times it's hard to tell where a child is having pain. Where the pain is located will determine where the problem is and sometimes what the diagnosis is. Again, age of the patient and location of the pain will make some major hints to the uh, orthopedic surgeon or your pediatric and family practice doctors about what the diagnosis might be. I always teach my primary care friends to focus on what the location of the tumor is, what the margin of the periphery looks like, and what's the content of the abnormality on the x-ray. Is a hole in bone with a cystic looking space or is it making bone? What's the density? D is for density of that abnormality. Beware of children with sprains, especially younger children. Younger children have a tendency to injure a growth plate more quickly than they would injure a ligament. Older kids will get ligament injuries just like adults. So sprains is always a little bit of a controversial term for us in immature children. Don't make the treatment worse than the disease. These benign bone tumors have a very high recurrence rate. You want to do effective treatment. What the most effective treatment is is sometimes very controversial and we don't want to have this child occupying clinic for their entire childhood rather than enjoying life and the effectiveness of treatment and the frequency of treatment are a big issue for benign bone tumors. Follow the child to confidence which means if you don't have a confident diagnosis when you're looking at a plain x-ray then repeat the x-ray in another four to six weeks or get a different kind of an image or get a consult with an orthopedic surgeon. Beware of teenagers with pain, especially knee pain, because teenagers are the highest risk children for malignant bone tumors. There's an old saying, I think, from uh, Osler in the old surgical literature that says, your mind knows what your eyes see, or I see what your mind knows, and that's an important uh, statement that the orthopedic surgeon has the background to make a diagnosis when other people would look at an x-ray like this and still wonder what the diagnosis is. Here's the LMD mnemonic that I use to teach um, some of my friends about the location of a lesion for non ossifying fibroma. They could be in the diaphysis or the metaphysis. It had this very clear, sclerotic, dense border, 
and they usually would contain a typical density of a fibrous lesion. Location, margin, and density, LMD. Here's the second most common tumor, an exostosis. It arises out of the cortex with a sort of bulging excrescence arising out of the cortex. The, in the typical exostosis or osteochondroma, the cortex is continuous and there's a cartilaginous cap. A lot of times there's debate about whether there is continuity in the cortex and there usually is continuity in the medullary cancellous bone for the typical osteochondroma. Osteochondroma is typically a solitary tumor, can occur in more unusual patterns in children with multiple exostoses, and the alternative term for an exostosis is an osteochondroma. Osteo referring to the bone, chondroma referring to the cap that usually sits on top of that abnormality. This is a large cystic lesion of bone, very aggressive looking, there's not a lot of reactive bone around it because the tumor is growing far faster than the bone can react to it. This is a large osteosarcoma and a very worrisome looking plain x-ray that should send off some bells and whistles to you when you first look at it because of its size and its aggressive nature. Here's a smaller aggressive tumor that's eating a hole in the bone. The bone is not reacting to the tumor at all because the tumor is growing much faster than the bone is able to react to it. Another very worrisome sign for an osteosarcoma, which is contained like a cyst in the upper humerus and ha can have some similarities to a benign bone tumor. Here's an osteosarcoma making only bone. It looks like a cue ball stuck onto the back of the femur. This is the femur. This is the knee joint. Here's the kneecap in the front with an extra large bone in the back. It's a very obvious sign of a bone forming tumor in the back of the knee. A more subtle example is a last example of a malignant bone tumor. Looks like a cyst, is not a cyst because it's full of solid tissue, does not have a well-defined border, has an indistinct border, and as we describe this as percolating through bone because of its infiltrative nature. And on an MRI, it has a soft tissue mass that tells you that this is probably a malignant bone tumor. Very different picture from a benign bone cyst. Here's an example of that same tumor with a very large, larger, thicker than an inch, close to two inch, inches in thickness of a soft tissue extension of that tumor, a very typical sign for an aggressive malignant Ewing sarcoma of the upper humerus. Teenagers with knee pain are the kids that will challenge you the most with regards to their diagnosis. Uh, you need to be very careful about following a teenager with knee pain. I believe very strongly they should be followed at six week intervals until you're very confident that they have an injury or a benign bone tumor and that you have a confident diagnosis clinically and from their imaging. If you've seen them twice at six week intervals, you're at 12 weeks and you're still looking at plain x-rays, you need to consider very seriously getting an MRI to increase the accuracy and confidence of your diagnosis. A lot of times we see a child and where the pain is occurring can be very challenging. Referred pain is frequently a problem in children, especially around the knee and around the shoulder. Malignant bone tumor pain can be very subtle. If a child has pain, you need to be confident about their diagnosis clinically and from their x-rays, especially if they're a teenager. Let's take the knee as an example of being a little more careful about your physical exam. If you were seeing a teenager with knee pain and they'd had pain in their knee, if it was along their joint line, they could very easily have a torn meniscus and you could make that suspicion, you could confirm that suspicion with a clinical exam that confirmed that their joint pain was really in the joint and not in the metaphysis of bone. If they're only tender at the metaphysis of bone, you'd have to be concerned that they had a bone tumor. If it was in their patella, it would be related to patella problems and probably not related to a tumor. So the difference between their patella, their knee joint, and the metaphysis of bone could be the difference of an osteosarcoma, and your clinical exam might help you be a little more suspicious about the plain x-rays and get an MRI a little bit earlier. So the knee exam and the specifics of the knee exam can be used to help you in challenging cases. These again are the most common tumors and simple bone cyst, what we refer to as a unicameral bone cyst, usually has fluid in it, aneurysmal bone cyst, 
aneurysmal bone cyst or ABC has tissue in it and not completely just fluid like a unicameral bone cyst, not ossifying fibroma, we refer to as an NOF or fibrous cortical defect, is a very benign fibrous tumor in the cortex and I showed you an example of an exostosis or an osteochondroma. These tumors are important because for every malignant tumor we will see 30 or 40 benign bone tumors. They are very common. They have a very high recurrence rate. Unicameral bone cyst has a recurrence rate after injection of anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. So multiple injections are required for treatment and not open surgery. In the first part of my career, I operated on these children. They had a high recurrence rate. It was clearly not the best management, and the best management changes over time in these children. Multiple treatments and long follow-up is required for some of these kids to make sure their tumors are not recurring. If they recur and you don't follow them and they get bigger, you have a bigger problem. Bigger, bigger tumors may be associated with a fracture. Fractures uh, occur in tumors that occur in the cortex of bone and you don't want to have a fracture through a growth plate. It can be the worst complication that can occur for a benign bone tumor. You don't also, you don't, you want to avoid distinguishing and separating out malignant bone tumors from benign bone tumors because a delayed diagnosis greater than three months in a malignant bone tumor can start to affect their prognosis. I'm going to show you a bunch of x-rays now just to teach you very quickly about the x-rays. This is not a great x-ray, it's of the shoulder. It's picked up on a chest x-ray. It's a very suggestive of benign bone cyst of the shoulder. Again, this is not a great example but on a better picture, and don't accept this as an adequate x-ray for the x-ray. Demand good x-rays to show you the cyst in this humerus. Here's an example of that cyst that's moved down the arm because the growth plate has grown away from that cyst, and then their fracture risk increases because the wall of the pipe, the cortical bone, is almost completely eliminated by this very benign bone cyst. That bone cyst is usually treated with an injection. In my hands, I like to use injections. They have to be retreated, repeated two or three times. Child goes home the same day. After two or three treatments, most of them do not need an operation. If that cyst occurs in a two-year-old, you've got the wrong diagnosis because 90% of the simple-looking cysts in the middle of the humerus in a two-year-old is a different benign diagnosis with other issues to deal with. So the location and the age of the tumor are very important. Here's a cyst in the middle of the humerus that sustained a fracture because it was encroaching upon the wall of the pipe and in the riskier area of bone for fractures. They, hear, they heal pretty quickly. In young kids and the teenagers, it's a bigger issue. Lastly, here's a cyst in the heel of an adolescent. This is a typical location. It's not very common. It is not a malignant tumor. Occasionally we'll see malignant tumors in a foot and they're not very common. You can confirm this with imaging like a CT or an MRI. Again, here is a cyst in the humerus that is a Ewing sarcoma. It does not look typical on a plain x-ray. It's not a typical appearance for a unicameral bone cyst and should generate the opinion that an MRI is needed to confirm a possible malignant tumor. Lastly, infections occur in kids frequently. Every year in this hospital, we'll see at least 300 kids with bone infections. They're normal, healthy children who just happen to get a bone infection, can present as a cyst, and has to be treated acutely because it's in a fairly aggressive situation for a young child. Other dysplasias and normal variants of growth can present cysts. Here's an exact example of that, which is near the pelvis. is the right hip, the left hip, the symphysis, the bladder would be back here. This is a normal variant of growth. When I was um, much younger in my training, I thought this was a bone tumor and needed to be scraped out. That's not true. This will heal on its own, does not need any treatment, may occasionally be painful, and is a condition that takes care of itself 98% of the time. Here's an example of an aggressive cyst, very large cyst in this pelvis. It occupies the entire part of this pelvis. It's a large cyst full of tissue. We refer to that as an aneurysmal bone cyst, and those are not treated very well with injections. They need a scrape out kind of an operation. Another cyst, which is a large non-ossifying fibroma, 
can tell because of some of the subtleties of, of the septations or walling off of this lesion makes it not a typical unicameral bone cyst. And this is a large, very large, non-ossifying fibroma. This looks like a cyst, but is not because it's, you're looking at it on FOSS or end on of an exostosis and it just shows you need to get two views on every plain x-ray to show what's an exostosis and what's a cyst. Here's another uh, exostosis that's atypical and very atypical but with a CAT scan and some other imaging you can confirm the diagnosis that this is clearly a benign bone tumor and uh, you can argue about whether this particular case needs a biopsy or not but it proves to be an atypical benign bone tumor. It does not need malignant treatment. Lastly, some more examples of a cyst um, lower down in the tibia and one in the humerus. It's very unusual to see multiple cysts in the same child. Again, the golden rules mostly focus on the child's age, the location of the tumor, and what its particular x-ray characteristics involve. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the session. And uh, if you have any problems with your child and your community and you're worried about a bone tumor, see your local orthopedic surgeon.